Hello everyone, Gainer here from HDB Upgrading Strategies and welcome back live. Now, uh, today is actually episode 7 for those who have been following my Facebook live videos. And what is today's topic that I'll be sharing with you guys, right? Um, actually, in fact, if you ask me, this is really something, well, I think something very interesting because, um, you know, uh, when I first owned my very first property, right? Uh, my parents, my my friends, my family members, you know, they always tell me one thing. Uh, please quickly pay off your loan as soon as possible, right? That's why I think this is something that I, I feel that's really very interesting. And I thought I want to share with you guys today uh, about my opinion uh, about on this topic. And that's why for those who actually follow my post, today's topic is actually this right should you pay off your outstanding loan as soon as possible right now i have seen uh, people are coming in to watch my live videos now if you have this concern right should you pay off your uh, outstanding loan as soon as possible now if you have this concern or probably this is something that you also you know you you probably just feel that should i do that you know but because i meet many many uh homeowners and every time I always, you know, hear uh, stuff, I mean, here, here, they will tell me that, hey, I just use 60000 or I just used $50,000 of my cash or my CPF to pay off my loan, right? So this is something I think is really, really, very common, right? So for those who are coming in, once again, let me repeat, this is the topic for today. Should you pay off your outstanding loan as soon as possible? And if you guys have this concern as well, or probably if you guys feel that this is something that might might, might be very interesting, probably just give me a like, help me to share this video, and probably I think uh, you will, will definitely benefit a lot of people as well. Thanks for some of you guys who have already helped me to like this video. Thank you so much. All right? So that's why I thought that um, this today I actually prepared some some calculations for you guys and just my thoughts that I'm going to share with you guys everything is just based on my opinion um, no right no wrong at the end is still your decision whether you want to do this or you want to do that right in terms of whether should I pay off my outstanding loan as soon as possible that's why I prepared a few calculations right uh, once again at any point of time if you guys feel that you have some uh, inquiries or whatsoever you just uh, you know, give me some comments, you know, then from then on, I probably can answer you because this is a live. Else, uh, if you see the video later words, you can probably also give me some comments uh, in this post, in this live post, and I will also address them as well, right? So once again, for those who are coming in, uh, let me repeat, this is the topic for today. Should I pay off my property outstanding loan as soon as possible and i believe that this is something a lot of people are also concerned why because a lot of i i, I think uh, a lot of if you buy a property probably your parents or your friends or your family members will tell you that hey you know interest rates are high you know stuff like that and probably i just don't feel good because man i have this money installments of three to four thousand dollars a month and somehow you know i just want to quickly pay off right so if you guys have this concern Probably you can just sound out, right? You can share with everyone so that we also know this is something really, really very common. And that's why I thought that I want to take this opportunity to, to probably just share with you guys my personal opinion, right? And so that you can have your own thoughts as well. At the end, the decision is still yours. And and, and probably, hope hopefully, I can share with you guys something very useful. And then you can probably think about it. And then, from, then you can probably decide what you can do or what you should do, right? Okay, so in fact, I actually prepared uh, some calculation for you guys. Now, so for example, if you guys, uh, if you are getting, you, if you are probably buying a $1 million property, right? So if you know that 5% uh, is cash, 20% is CPF or cash and cash, you know, and you'll be getting a 75% loan, right? So what is 75% loan from the $1 million property that you're going to buy? Now, I actually prepared this. Right, you can see uh, your loan amount will be $750,000 and your interest rate, that take for example, is 2.5% interest and we let's say we look at uh, getting a 30 years loan tenure. Now, what will be your monthly installment? You just probably look at this monthly payment, right? Your monthly installment will be, if I can zoom down here, 
it will be two thousand nine hundred plus, probably three thousand dollars, right? And the total payment or probably total interest that you are going to pay is three hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred and twenty six dollars. What does this mean? This means that if you take a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars loan, and based on two point five percent interest rates and based on thirty years of loan tenure, your total interest that you're going to pay for this thirty years. Will be three hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred and twenty six dollars, right? Probably I can just write this on the board, so that you have a much clearer idea. So if you are taking a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars loan, right? Uh, if based on two point five percent interest, right? Based on thirty years loan tenure, right? Your monthly instalment, monthly instalment, uh, will be around two thousand nine hundred and sixty three. This is per month okay total interest you're paying is three hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred and twenty six this is interest now this interest uh, if you can look is the total interest you are going to pay for 30 years based on seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars loan that you take uh i always tell my clients because my clients always tell me gainer, gainer I actually going to pay this full amount, right? Um, honestly speaking, if you really look at it, you won't be paying this full amount. You will only pay this full amount if you are staying in your property for thirty years. That means thirty years this loan tenure, right? Total interest or based on two point five thirty years will be this, right? So technically speaking, if you stay in a property for ten years. Right for 10 years and you decided to sell 10 years later this won't be the interest that you're going to pay right because a lot of people see this figure and they thought that wow this is the full figure i'm going to pay you are right provided you stay for 30 years at the rate of 2.5 percent interest now so technically speaking if you really see a lot of people they probably sell their property within the next five years 10 years probably some stay for what 11 12 years and then that interest is calculated based on that the, the, the number of years that they stay. So in true fact, unless you're staying for 30 years or more, then this will be the interest you're paying in total based on 2.5, based on 30 years, and based on $750,000. Now, you guys are clear. If you are clear, probably can give me some thumbs up. At least you understand at this point of time, right? So I'm going to share with you guys another thing. Now, this is based on $750,000 of load. So here comes the thing. Here comes the very interesting thing. Now, Suppose, thanks for liking, <laughs> suppose that you have $100,000 of cash plus CPF. So either way, cash or CPF. And you have this thought now, right? So, so let me paint you a scenario. Huh? You just bought a property, you, you get a loan of $750,000 loan, right? And somehow you have an extra cash of $100,000 can be a mixture of cash or CPF and you are stuck somewhere in between, right? Because you hear a lot of your friends, your family members giving you all the different kind of comments to pay off your loan as soon as possible. And somehow you 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 might be wondering, should I use this hundred thousand dollars to quickly pay off to reduce my loan from seven hundred and fifty thousand to six hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Now is this something very common that you guys are facing? I and honestly speaking uh, after speaking to so many, so many people of my clients, this is something that really catch them in between. And sometimes when I meet them, they already told me that I already paid somehow 50000 60000 right? So I think this is something really common. That's why I thought that for today, I want to draw this calculation for you guys so that you can you can understand where, where I'm coming from and then you decide for yourself what can you do or what you should do, right? So for example, now, uh, I use my hundred thousand can be cash or CPF to pay my loan, right? So now I actually done another figures for you. So this is another figures based on six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now you can see so based on six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, based on the same interest rates of two point five, and based on the loan tenure of thirty years. Now if you really look closely, right, my monthly payment would be two thousand five hundred. And sixty-eight dollars, and my total interest payment will be two hundred and seventy-four 
$1,583, right? So if I can draw this clearly, so now I'm taking, I'm reducing my, my loan, right? So I minus $100,000, correct? So my loan is reduced to $650,000. Now my monthly installment, how much my monthly installment will be? It will be $2,568 per month. You guys can see, right? Okay. And the interest total for the next, for 30 years, right? The interest will be $274,583. This will be the interest. Now, once again, this is the full interest for 30 years. So just probably if I can just paint you a scenario. So these are based on estimate. So you just got a loan, right? 750000 you have an extra cash or probably CPF of 100000 and you decided to reduce this in the first year, maybe. Just give you an example. So six, so your loan reduced to $650,000. Now, your monthly installment will be reduced to this amount and your total interest for 30 years will be reduced to this amount. So what is the difference which I'm going to calculate for you? Right? I, I calculate for you so you can understand. So 2963 I minus two five six eight. So what's the difference? The difference will be three hundred and ninety five dollars. This is very clear, right? Per month. So this, how much is this? This will be three one six eight two six minus two seven four five eight three. It will be forty two thousand two hundred and forty three dollars. And this is for 30 years. Technically speaking, right, this amount of interest, uh, if I can just reduce to per year, divided by 30 years, right, because this is 30 years loan tenure, I divide it by 30, it will be $1,408.10. This is per year. Per year. Meaning to say, okay, simple, simply put, Today, if I take out $100,000 of my spare cash, can be cash and CPF, to reduce the loan from seven hundred and fifty dollars to six hundred and fifty thousand, dollars my monthly difference, that means I save how much, I, I, I don't need to pay as much, right? The difference per month installment will be $395, right? And the interest that I can save, it will be $1,408.10 per year. 30 years will be this amount. So this is very clear, right? Now, here comes the question that I want to ask you guys. Right? The question is, if this figure is worth for you to save every month, that if you think that by using your 100,000 of cash or CPF is good to reduce this figure to just reduce from here to here, is good enough then of course by all means you can do so you get where I'm coming from I just want because a lot of people when they decided to do this they didn't really break it down very clearly to themselves so that's why I say for this particular topic there's no right or wrong it's just based on my opinion and based on how I'm going to do this sums everything is just estimate and for you guys to really think through should you do this or you should not do this at the end of the day this topic there's no right or wrong. It depends on your comfort level and decision because there are some people, no matter what, they just feel good reducing the figure even by just a couple of hundred dollars, right? There are some people really feels much better. And there are some people who really look look at it and they feel that having $100,000 of extra cash or CPF inside their bank account feels better. And I tell you why I say so. Now, because I think... If you feel that by reducing this amount, you feel much better than by all means. But somehow I felt that having $100,000 of cash or CPF inside your bank account or CPF account, it can be a good option as well. Why? Right? Because sometimes there might be rainy days. I'll give you an example. I've seen clients or I've seen people who, you know, when they, are, they, they own a property, but somehow the other the spouse probably stopped working. Now, when you stop working, that means one person couldn't be able to finance the property. So when you couldn't finance the property, 
per month you still have to pay this amount no matter what or this amount no matter what now that's the thing do you have these reserve funds that I always stress to help you guys to tide over when times are not as rosy right that's why sometimes having this amount will be good right for you guys to feel that you know whenever there's some times whereby it's not easy for you guys in terms of job security you know stuff like that then this will be very useful rather than if you wipe out this whole entire amount you don't have because you used to reduce the loan right you still have to pay this figure every month you still have to pay this figure every month so meaning to say if one of you the spouse is not working you still have to pay this amount regardless right so so it's a matter of um how you guys look at it so that's why i think this is just my personal opinion uh, for me well having this figure this amount in my bank account i think is very important because i think that at times if 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 i cannot afford somehow rather at least i can type this through i don't have to worry too much rather than just using the hundred thousand dollars to reduce the money installment from this to this because at the end of the day you may not be really paying this full interest if you really get wives if you really hear what i say previously because this interest will this interest or this interest will only um materialize the day where you sell your property so meaning to say this is the the whole amount for 30 years right but if you just sell five years later six years later you you will not be paying this full interest it's probably just a fraction of it probably what maybe forty thousand fifty thousand right so that's important and one thing i also have to highlight since we are talking about this now can you imagine 30 years if you stay in a property that don't appreciate and you're going to pay this full 300 over thousand meaning to say if you own a one million dollar property and for 30 years you stay and you have to pay 300 over thousand technically speaking you have to sell what 1.3 plus will be your break even and what if that 30 years mark when you're going to sell property prices is not in your favor then you have a big issue right so that's why i think this is something very important which i want to highlight today and especially whether should you pay off your loan as soon as possible right so this is something i think is really really uh something that you guys will, 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 will really look at it understand it and probably work in such a way whereby it will be in good favor for you in good favor for you is depends on how you look at it it depends on whether you feel that this 300 over dollars reduction is good or probably having a hundred over thousand dollars of spare cash or cpf inside your account is good to to, to be a safe bet or probably will be like a, as a reserve funds right so that's something i want to bring up to you guys again right for those who are now watching you pro probably you have already come to the end of my live video and one more thing i probably just want to highlight this topic is really about should you pay off your outstanding loan as soon as possible you can probably see this video again and right and for this live video if you guys don't have any more questions if you guys have questions you probably just let me know now i can probably can help you guys to answer else probably just give me some likes share this video help me to you know if this is something that you feel is important for you guys just hope that you can share like this video and probably share with your friends as well so thank you so much i see a lot of people suddenly give me a like like like, like button uh thanks a lot and with that if there's no further questions you can still give me some other you know comments just below my post you know stuff like that and i will probably help you guys to answer as well with that thank you so much i hope you like my this live video once again and see you next week again thank you so much goodbye and good night